Hey, it's Scotty from Zenium Real Wealth here. How are you going? This is our July 2019 market update. So we do one of these every month, as you know, and tonight is the July 19 one because it's July and it's 2019. All right, so some of the key points from this month we're going to discuss this evening and then take a look at the data that's come out for this month and the clocks, the HTW clock as we normally do, and of course our Zenium Compass and see what it tells us that we should be looking at for the coming months ahead. First cab off the rank and the elephant in the room, of course, is APRA. So APRA is the Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority. They're the guys that, I guess, manage banks, for want of a better term, or be their sort of watchdog. So they came out on... I think it was, what's it say here, 21st of May, uh, then said that they're looking to have a look at and possibly change the assessment rate. Uh, now, the assessment rate is a rate when you go for a home loan that banks use to assess you on. So it's not necessarily the home loan rate. It's a rate that's dictated by APRA. And they're saying they're looking to change that. Anyway, we released a video uh, around that time that gave you an idea of what those changes would actually mean in real terms and it worked out uh, we'll come to that shortly and go over that again so APRA has had this rate set at around 7 to 7.25 and 7.25 is the industry average now what that means is you could go and get a home loan for four percent but you would be assessed as if the home loan was 7.25 percent and that's a big deal obviously that's a massive difference so should there be a difference? Well, I think there should be a difference. It allows a buffer for things that are, you know, we don't know what's going on in the life of your home loan. It's a long time. Um, but should it have been that much? Well, I don't know. I mean, it depends how you look at it, right? I mean, if you just look at it and say, well, that's three and a bit percent, or you could look at it and say, well, it's, it's 70, 80 percent of the original home loan rate more. And it depends which way you want to look at it, like any statistic. So what they've done here is, I'll share this. Let's see, here we go here. Uh, APRA assessment. Okay, can you guys see what have we got here? No? Why is that not going? All right, now, you got my screen? All right. So as you can see here, it came out on the 21st of May. We look here, APRA finalise amendments now. We'll go in there. You guys can read that. Yep. Good. <clears throat> and uh, we scroll down. Right, so I think letter to ADIs, which is uh, accredited authorised deposit taking institutions or banks, um, blah, 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 at least 7%. Common industry practices to use 7.25%. Instead, they'll be able to review and set their own minimum interest rate floor uh, with a buffer of at least 2.5% over the loan's interest rate. So going back to our example before, if we have a 4% uh, loan, then we're now using a 6 0.5% assessment rate instead of 7.25. If you use a loan that is less than that, obviously it's a lesser amount. And I think a, a fixed amount over a variable loan rate is a, is a fairer system than having a line in the sand and says, right, 7.25 is the number. Blah, 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 we're raving on, right? The point of this is that uh, my mate Todd and I did some calculations and it came down to this. On the average household income, and we just average a lot of things, and there's lots of averages, right? There's no such thing as an average person, but this was an average. Uh, buying an average property, I think it's around 700,000. Uh, their borrowing capacity difference was 10%. So they were able to borrow an extra 10% if the serviceability rate changed by 1%. So if the serviceability rate drops from 7.25 to 6.25, that couple, that imaginary couple that we used, had the ability to borrow an extra 10%. That is a lot. That is a lot of borrowing capacity increase 
off a one from a one percent change in the serviceability rate. Now, bearing in mind that doesn't change any of the bank's rates, we're not talking about RBA rates here and, and rates dropping. We're talking about an assessment rate. On assessment rate alone, it put an average of ten percent extra in your pocket to go and actually go and buy property with. So that is a pretty big deal. All right. So that's the APRA update. Now you can make your own, I guess conclusions as to what that means. Does that mean the property market is going to be fueled because more people have money? Does it mean that it's just another sign that's the end of the world? I don't know, like that's your call, right? Depends how you want to read the glass is half full, half empty or doesn't have anything in it at all, whatever. So what we're going to go on to now is as we cover every month is, is our uh, HTW update. You guys got that one up there. So that is the Herod Todd White National Property Clock. Uh, they get this out every month. I think there's a handout that might be going to uh, to be shared at the moment. Uh, if not, you can jump on their website, which I think is htw.com.au, I think. It might be Herod Todd White. And uh, get in their free email newsletter thing that comes out every month. And this whole report is in there. I've just grabbed the clock out because that's what we're going to discuss. So uh, I don't want to talk over things you already know, but the if you can see that clearly, I'll see if I can make it bigger. Here we go. Uh, the, I'll make me smaller. Does that make it bigger for you? I don't know. Uh, the towns in orange are changes from the month before. It doesn't tell you which where they were, it just tells you it's a change. And the ones in Adelaide are in the same position. Okay, so if we go around, the clock here is peak of the market. Now that's top of the market, top, top, top price, top activity, all that sort of stuff. We go down, there's a declining market, starting to decline, declining, approaching the bottom. Bottom of the market, where everyone's scared, doesn't do anything. Well, we'll talk about that. Start of recovery, oh, things are looking, oh, there was a house sale this week and there hasn't been one in two years. Oh, that's great, there we go. Rising market. Approaching peak and at the peak again. So right now, Hobart's approaching the peak. Uh, we've got Adelaide, Adelaide Hills, Barossa Valley. There's wine regions over there in a rising market. We've got start of recovery. A lot of Queensland and semi-mining related or tourism related, related towns over here and, and regions. Cairns, Glasgow, Mackay, Port Hedland in WA uh, and Whitsundays. Uh, we've got bottom of the market, Alice Springs. And a lot of the southeast corner in Queensland, so Brisbane, Ipswich area. We've also got Melbourne, Perth. Perth's been bottom of the market for a while. And we've got Toowoomba back around there. So Toowoomba was declining there for a while. Uh, and so, yeah, there's a lot of that, a lot special of that southeast corner there. Uh, if we start at the top, at a peak of the market, we've got Bathurst, Canberra, Albury, Dubbo, Sunshine Coast, uh, starting to decline. Uh, Coffs Harbour, Central Coast, all that sort of region there in New South Wales, and taking on to Lismore, Gold Coast, that sort of thing. We've got Tam Tamworth. Declining market, Kalgoorlie, Newcastle. Uh, approaching bottom, Broome, Geraldton, Illawarra, some stuff in sub, uh, WA, Southern Highlands, and Sydney, they think, is approaching bottom of the market. So that's an interesting one. You can see Sydney's orange, and it's different from before. So that's great. But as usual, we say, well, what does that mean? What does that actually mean that we can do? All right, so we need to look at our compass and get a good feel for that. Now, how is this? It's a bit big. How do you guys see that? All right, <clears throat> you got that there. So this is our compass, and we take what we see on the HCW clock, right? So we say Sydney, right, down there. What's that? It's three o'clock, six o'clock, so it's like four, four thirty or something. We go over here, and we're looking down in Sydney. It's coming out of the discounted buying phase, and we're entering now into the time when we're looking at property that gives positive cash flow. Because it's not too bad a time to look at positive cash flow in Sydney. You'll find that yields will start to increase if there is such a thing like that in Sydney. So the other ones we want to look at is. Uh, say Brisbane at the bottom of the clock. We're down here, we're definitely chasing positive cash flow and preparation for some potential development if the market starts to move again. So we need to make 
that clear that you only look in those areas if the market starts to move. We've got some interesting ones here at Mackay and Gladstone and Cairns and all that sort of section in Queensland up there. A lot of them um, are related to mining, but they're not purely reliant on mining, which is uh, Gladstone is more reliant on mining than, say, Mackay because Mackay's got a lot of agriculture and Cairns has tourism. So if you look at something in Mackay there, uh, HTW is saying that it's the start of recovery. Now, a start of recovery is not a bad time to go and think about doing something there. And you might go, oh, gee, Mackay, it's been in doldrums. Who wants to do that? That's a fair call, right? But you've got to go by the data. You can't just go by your gut all the time. So when you get to Mackay, it's saying, well, start a recovery. Well, the next step around from that is into a rising market. And if we can produce other data that says, well, that recovery is more than just a concept, it's an actual, then that wouldn't be a bad place to look for a few things to do over the next 12 months. So that's one to keep an eye on. Up here, one that we don't want to be looking at doing anything at the moment would be Hobart. It's approaching peak of the market. So that's over there at, say, 10 o'clock on the clock. That's right up there. That's right where we're saying to get out, okay? We need to be getting out of that market now. We're not in the Hobart market, and I don't think any of our clients are in there at the moment. But if they were, we'd be looking at exiting them, especially if it was some sort of project or a short-term hold venture. So that's how you use that compass there. And uh, where are we going back here? Um, in the start of decline, we're looking at uh, Gold Coast, Lismore, Tamworth, Central Coast. So there could be, that's uh, looking at, say, 2, 2.30. That's over here, right where we're saying to get back in uh, and assess the market. So in those areas there, we go and assess it, and there could be some real potential for some massive discounts in those areas, and that's what we've got to keep an eye on. And so that's the discounted buying. So we'd colour code then blue, we colour code Brisbane green, and anything on the development side, we colour code red. So that's how that compass works in conjunction with the HW clock. And we go through that every month, but just for those who are new and haven't seen it before, that's that. So that's the big news of the month there. We've got the APRA uh, essentially taking the certain floodgates off uh, for lending, uh, definitely making it a, a more fairer and uh, adjustable system based around rate rather than a fixed line in the sand. We've got our update from HTW and where they say their data points are for the month and the months ahead. And, of course, we've seen how that works with uh, Zach, our Zenium Compass. The last thing I'll talk to you about this evening will be uh, just where we sit on the overall property clock uh, there, which is Philip Anderson's clock. And I'm not going to go through exactly how this works, but I'm just going to point out some dates. So once again, we're still sitting. That hasn't changed. We're in that 1920 mid-cycle slowdown. Uh, I think that we are seeing that now, uh, which is evident by a lot of those suburbs entering into a downward market or Sydney was leading the, the, the charge there. Um, I don't think we're out of that at all at the moment. So there could be good buying and you need to look at some regional areas to balance out, you know, some of those cycles that are move independent or slightly differently to your capital city markets. But one thing to note is that we're looking at the, the you know, some US charts as well uh, with their yield curve, uh, whether it's inverting with long-term bonds, short-term rates, that sort of thing. Um, and that's, that's something to watch there as we come into a mid-cycle because that usually goes inverted. So we, we come around there. Once that comes out in 2020-ish, uh, then we're on to the second stage of the, stage of the cycle and we're in full swing ahead. So that's just something to note. We touch on that again every month just to make sure we know where we're at on that one, but you guys all have a copy of that anyway. All right, so I think that is probably about it. I'll stop sharing this, come over here. All right, I'm back. Um, that's it. That's as you know with this format, we spend about half the time talking about the update, and then if there's any there's time left, we talk about some questions. So if you, any of you've got any questions at the moment, chuck them in the sidebar, and uh, Jason and myself will answer them as we go. Um, I think the only other thing I'm going to talk about right now is the prediction of interest rate drops from the RBA, uh, another one or two before the end of the year. Um, what does that mean? Well. If they drop it twice, it's half a percent and you can do your own calculations on your home loan or your investment property if the banks pass on the full rate. 
Uh, does it really make a difference? I mean, if your interest rate is 4.5, it'll go down to 4. If the banks pass on the full suite of everything, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about will it make a difference to your back pocket? Will it make a difference to what the economy is doing or what people's perception are? See, when, when rates start dropping, there's a big contingent of people that start saying, well, the economy is not great. You know, rates are dropping, so that's to stimulate the economy. It must be bad. Now, I'm not going to comment on that. I mean, everyone can interpret data their own way. What I am going to say is that you're going to be able to find a story in no matter what you want to look for. So if the economy is bad because rates are dropping, then you're going to find that story and you can run and agree with it. That's okay. Or you could say, well, gee, money's never been cheaper. I'm not saying if you go out and take a whole bunch of debt, but you should definitely be looking to pay down your personal debt while it's at a discount and on sale, right? I mean, your home loan's on sale. That's effectively what it is. Our long-term average of home loans has been until the past few years between 7.5% or something. You know, we're nowhere near that now. You know, you can be up to 50% off that. So your home loan rate is 50% off. Take advantage of it, pay down debt. You know, take advantage of it, do a project, make some money, pay down debt. You know, whatever it is, use this time, but don't use it to go and accrue debt on new cars and boats and all that sort of stuff. I'm not giving you lifestyle advice. I'm saying you've got to be aware of the economic times and what that means. Just because the money's cheap doesn't mean it's actually free. And it's going to cost you in the long run. So as we, that's that's my comment on those RBA rates. We can't do anything about that. It doesn't matter if they go up, they go down. That's their choice. We can just uh, make sure we've got a portfolio that's planned and balanced, and we can, you know, plan for what we think may or may not happen, or have a balanced portfolio that can benefit either way. Okay. So as we, have you got any questions there? We've got any questions coming yet, Jace? Okay, when there's a number of regions on the HCW report that are appealing to transact in, okay, so that are appealing, yep, what other factors do you take into account when choosing between regions? Yeah, okay, so I, my simple answer to that is always infrastructure spend, population. You know, population is what drives infrastructure spend in certain regards. Uh, and so you need those two things. So if we've got, let's call that clock back up again. We'll use a live example. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, okay, got it back. Man, I'm nailing this technology tonight. All right. So... We go over here and say something that's appealing to to invest in, uh, say, a rising market, okay? So we've got uh, Harvey Bay over here on the rising market, Launceston, Shepparton, Emerald, Barossa Valley, Adelaide Hills, Adelaide. Now, look, there's one capital city there in that rising market. So straight away, you're going to say, let's have a look at if there's some major infrastructure spend happening in Adelaide. Where's the where's the uh, population growth happening in that area? Um, Emerald. Emerald definitely is a catchment for, uh, you know, mining and agriculture, but it's very, very reliant on those things. Harvey Bay. Harvey Bay is like the death capital of Australia. People just go there to die. And sorry if you live in Harvey Bay, but your property prices are doing the same thing. Um, not an area you'd look at. On a rising market, yeah, in relation to what? You know, look at some background data. So straight away in that area that might be appealing to invest in, you go for where the population and infrastructure spend is. So I'd be looking at Adelaide, Adelaide Hills, that sort of thing. Uh, and in the other areas, exactly the same thing, right? Always check out that sort of stuff and what's planned for the area. That's a good question. All right, another question. Should you invest or develop near where you live or where the best growth is? Okay. I'm going to take that as a two-part question. So as in I'll separate the invest and the development side. And there's a reason for that. Should you invest near where you live? No. No way. Invest where the best growth or the best cash return or whatever it is. Let me get this off so you can see my lovely head better. Um, okay. 
I don't know how to do this. All right, there we go. Maybe uh, I'm back. All right, so yeah, invest where you live. Look, it's a pain. What you're going to do, you invest the street over, you're going to say, I can do the handyman work, I can do this and that, and you're going to drive past the property four times a week and the, the tenants are going to have picked up their local newspaper and you're going to be on to the rental manager to say it looks like a tip. It's just going to cause you stress, right? Now, I know because we've got a couple of properties on Sunshine Coast, that's where I live, and I've gotten past that now, but I used to drive past them and go, oh, what's going on? They haven't mowed the grass. Um, but that aside, you should always invest where the best growth is anyway. Otherwise, what are you doing? Really, like why, if if you gave me $200,000 and I said, okay, I'll give you a return on that, and then I came back to with a return and one one scenario I'd made you 10%, one scenario I'd made you 1%, and I could say, which one do you want? And you go, well, I'm going to take the 10%. Why would I take the one? Ah, oh, well, the one, we could still see the money, you know, but the 10 was it, was, it was the same thing. I just couldn't see it. it was around the corner. Like definitely go where the growth or the cash return is. You've got to go where the best return is for you. Otherwise, besides the rental thing, it's just not the right thing to be doing. It's not an investment. It's just a hobby. Development, okay, that's that can be a little bit different. Obviously, you want to develop where the returns are going to be. If you can do a development that you can manage yourself and you're going to be able to go past it and it, it's, it's, it's an active thing, right? There's not much point doing a development if you live on the Sunshine Coast and you need to do it in Newcastle if you've got to be there. Like you can fly down and live there while it's on, fine. But technically that's still a development near where you are at the time. So developing is a hard one. You're always going to develop where the returns are, but you're going to have to be near it anyway. Doing a development from remote, unless you've got a really, really good team, that's going to be a really hard thing for you to do. You're really going to have to be hands-on and be across it. Um, and, of course, having a good team makes that all the better. But if you built that team, then power to you. If not, could cause you grief. All right. Any more questions we got, Jace? Else have any questions? Uh, feel free to type them in the box. All right, what do I, I've got a comment here. Seeing that. All right, well that's it because I don't need to hold you guys up any longer. This is just our monthly market update, so it's usually pretty quick. So uh, next Thursday night, we'll bring opportunities from around Australia that line up with what the clocks are telling us that we should be looking for. So that'll involve, it doesn't need to always involve everything, but we'll always try and involve something from development, something that is discounted buying, something in positive cash flow, just to give you an idea how that works and also provide real and actual opportunities uh, if you're ready to act on them and give you something to chew over, have a think about and run with if it suits you. So that's next Thursday night. Um, you'll get the emails out on that, uh, you know, probably Monday or something like that. All right, that's enough from me. This is Zenium Real Wealth. And if you haven't joined, click on the link in the sidebar there and join up. It's free. And we do these live sessions once weekly every month on a force type of rotating. So we always do one market update, one opportunities, one Q&A, and one special guest. That's every month. And uh, it's all live and pre-recorded. And you'll get a copy of this after the event as well. So click down there to join Zenium. And uh, that's it from me. I'm going to go and have some food. And thanks for joining us on this webinar. Have a great day.